what I can do now is take my nicely retopologized version, go back to my working subtool so I can keep all my stuff in the same place and I have my eyes and everything. I'm going to paste it. Oh, sorry, I forgot to... Did I show you that? Anyway, uh, with this one, I click on copy and then go in here and click on paste. Uh, alternatively, you can, because you have multiple tools, you can click on append and then you can select the append and you can select the tool that you just added or that you work on a different tool. Uh, but now I have this one. I'm going to turn this off. And just to keep things tidy and clean, uh, I'm going to select the top one, create a new folder. And I'm going to call this one OR, as in originals. And I'll just, that's just something that I do. It doesn't matter. And I'll put everything in there except that one. Turn that off. OK. I'm going to show you how I would approach this process. I will show you the type of details that I would add, how I would add them, how to um, to use those brushes. But it's ultimately, this is the the, the time um, after you have a design and you have everything locked in place and you're happy with everything. This is the time that um, I would personally spend, you know, hours just like doing the same thing. And of course, you can use um, alphas and you can use the brushes that I customize, things like that, to speed up the workflow, and that is actually a really good thing. But there's nothing that will beat the manual process. And if you have the luxury of time um, to create something like this, I think it's one of the, the most rewarding things, just to do everything you know, by hand. And it doesn't mean like every pour has to be by hand, but like just doing all those wrinkles and things by hand. So I'm going to show you um, some things about that. So first, I'm just going to go ahead and I think, I think I need to subdivide this a couple more times. There we go. Um, and to be able to smooth this out, so I'm just smoothing this out, but I think I need more resolution. So I'm going to use a smooth slider just to smooth everything at once. And some areas a bit more than others. Just doing a quick smoothing pass that obviously unsharpens things, but I'll go over that area again in a bit. OK, and remember, I have the smooth strongest selector, so it's pretty quick. Uh, so I have 4 million polygons. I usually don't go over 4 million polygons um, unless I need to, to describe certain details. And, and depending on how close I'm going to get to something, but you know, a series can handle lots of polygons. So uh, this is one of the reasons I mentioned, depending on what you're trying to do, you might want to split subtools because you can have uh, 16 million polygons. Uh, let's, let's do a quick save, just in case. Uh, I'm going to subdivide this one more time. So I'm going to end up with 17, 18 million polygons, let's say. Um, so plenty of the resolution. But if you subdivide things into multiple subtools, you can have 8 million polygons in each one of the subtools. So the head could have 8, millions, 8 million, um, the body can have 8 million, the, the jaw can have a million, that sort of thing. But um, it's a tricky one. So only I would only do it if there's a, a, a natural, easy way to hide the difference between the subtools. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So now um, I'm going to start doing the details. So I like to start with basic stuff before I jump into any customized brush or anything. So the, the basic stuff for me is just go with the damp standard brush. Um, so let's say here around the, the eyes, I'm just going to refine the, the main, uh, kind of like resharpen or redefine the main uh, cuts or the main lines. So I'm just going to do this before I um, tweak the volumes. And every time that I do a few of these, I always go with the smooth brush just to smooth it out. So this is what I'm talking about in terms of the refinement or the manual refinement of the process. So it takes time um, and it's, you know, it's like a like a conscious choice. It's not like just apply a texture, or click and drag to add an alpha. Uh, this this part of the process is there's still like um there's still a way of consciously design and decide where these lines should be or like at least the main lines. So there probably would be uh, would be a lot of more lines in here, uh, but this sort of first pass is is crucial to sort of 
define the secondary or almost like the primary shapes of details. So you could even go as far as saying you have your primary, secondary, and tertiary shapes. But within the tertiary shapes, which is kind of like what we're starting to do here, you have the primary shapes or the primary tertiary shapes, the secondary tertiary shapes, and the tertiary tertiary shapes. <laughs> um, so <laughs> this is this is my way of um of saying that these are like larger details, right? So I would go through the entire character. Um, it's almost like sharpening and, and making some of the, the things that I already have here more prominent. So you see, I'm just thinking about how this sort of fleshy thing sort of fits within the more bony part of the, of the beak or how, how it's attached to it. So there's going to be probably some sort of you know, tension and pulling into it. So it's somehow attached attached to it. So I'm just using what I already have here. Um, that's kind of like an, a good thing. I don't have to really think too much about the design. I'm just letting what I already have as my, as my guide or letting it guide my, my choices of these cuts that I'm making. Um, so the only extra thing that I'm thinking of is, you know, what are the what are the tension points that are actually pulling into the skin? What are the the hard areas like the shell here at the top or the bone? So uh, I wouldn't start doing a bunch of wrinkles here because I know that this is either there's um, it's close to the bone, so it's kind of like the cranium. Um, but there's there's always like a transition here, and that's what I like to worry more, um, you know, focus on more. So you see, if you look at this. Beetle, um, there's, there's details everywhere. Like everything is, uh, everything is detail. Um, but the, the ridges or like the, the lines that are protruding the most are kind of like towards the edges. So you see this region right here is an edge, a hard edge, same thing as here, and obviously the edges. So that's kind of like something that I'm using as reference, not just for this beetle, like this in nature, everything. Um, you know, if you look at this beetle as well, or the mantis here, so like towards the edges of things, there's um, there are clean lines that have ridges in some cases, and then the rest sort of like fades into tiny bumps and details. So in what I'm doing, that's that's another thing I'm, I'm thinking about. So I could say like this is one of those ridges here, um, this line, right? So I might keep this sort of region free of very strong details or pores, same thing around here. Because it's kind of like the, the outline of my creature, right? So those lines or these areas might be uh, very clean in terms of the, the, the difference or the bumpiness, uh, but then I can start sort of fading into details with, you know, in this case that I have like a shell sort of thing at the top and this area that is flesh, uh, what flesh in here? Um, that's uh, that's a practical way of defining or deciding what goes into what. So in here, I will have more of um wrinkly details because there's compression, there's pulling. Um, so all of these things, I'm thinking, they're attached to that ridge or like that that protrusion of the cranium of the creature, right? So um, there there will be a lot of this. Whereas in these areas, that also might be a point to or, a, or an area to add details but that might be more like a pointy little bumpy area that is closer to bone for example uh, or you know uh, and th that might be like a nice subtle transition into each other uh, but that's that's how i decide where to put things and where not to um so it's yeah a lot to do with um with the references that i collected or what i usually tend to do clean this up a little bit and result oh i forgot about this thing um, i'm gonna go back to the lowest subdivision level and clean this up i'll have to do it bit by bit because that was the the area that was a little bit crooked when i did the retopology the only point that's it quick and easy fix so yeah for the most part i think this manual process is about re remarking or um, sharpening those those details that might have or, or secondary shapes that might have um, got lost in the projection or reprojection process. 
So you see, I'm just like reusing what I already have here and just sharpening that difference in some areas, not everywhere, um, but also thinking about the, the transition. So for example, this bumpy area right here, I'll show you again what I'm trying to do. Um, so let's consider these blobs as part of that sort of waddle thing. And then let's think about, this is more of a nice, simple skin. There will be pores and stuff that I could add, but it's just like skin uh, that will stretch and, and move very organically, right? So um, one thing that at this stage I think about is how do I, how do I transition from this very specific type of material or type of uh, surface into another? So there's still part of the, you know, they're both, let's say, covered by skin, but underneath this wattle thing might have like some sort of glands or some, some things that are like slightly uh, thicker or... I don't know. It could be it could be anything. Like I can make something up just to justify it. But as long as I think to myself, okay, there there are differences between those two materials. I can think about okay. So let's say that this sphere or this protrusion here, this bulging piece, um, is going to pull the skin. So I'm just going to have like this um, this folds of this of the skin from this side, sort of going into this sphere. So this you know, growths. Um, and, and that is an important thing of the process so that everything feels part of the same. So it gives, it gives the composition of the character a little bit of hierarchy uh, as to like, this is one type of detail, this is another one, uh, but it also keeps that sort of unity, making sure that, yeah, the, they're different things, but they're all part of the same. Hopefully that makes sense as well. Uh, and that's something that I will probably have to do with uh, a few more of these as I move between these spheres, shapes, and the rest of the skin. So there's a lot of maybe pulling of the skin. So anyway, I I'm going to try to keep it simple. Because again, this is something that is very repetitive. It's kind of like boring to watch. Uh, but I, I would do this more and more to, to refine it. So um, let me just show you the before and after. So if I select this guy here, uh, solo mode. So this is before the subdivision. This is with the subdivision, right? And with the subtle details. So you see how everything starts to cling together um, and work just fine. Uh, by the way, I wouldn't worry about setting all of these details into a separate layer, a sculpting layer. You can if you want to, uh, but those those are not the type of details that I would add into a into a into a layer. I would use layers for, I use them a lot, but I would use them for more of a surface detail. So to me, this one is still defining the base mesh, right? Or the base shape. Uh, but then you can add a layer if you want to. So um, let's go ahead and do a couple more of different details. So uh, just to show you how I would use the, the layers. So I'm gonna duplicate it just so I, I mean, cause this is just to show you the process, the workflow, but I probably come back to this guy and uh, work a little bit more before I do this. So I would recommend you do the same. Um, let's go to layers. I want to create a new layer. And uh, I'm going to use a custom brush just to show you how fast this is. So I have a bunch of custom brushes. You might have already used some of those or have some of these packs. Um, the One of the recent packs that I release is the uh, bark and wood brush. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. And you can find this in the Seabrush Guides websites, uh, Seabrush Guides website or seabrushguides.com if you want to. Uh, so I'm going to use this Hickory Flat brush. Uh, and this one, even though it is for bark and wood, um, depending on how you apply it and you know the flow that you give it, it could bear, it could very much be like a uh, like a bone structure. So, uh, and also I'll bring in a reference so that you can see what I'm trying to create here. So this sort of thing might be good for it. So I'll just use this to add these sort of details. And you see, it's very, very easy. Once you have the, the block out of the shapes, it's a very easy thing to do. All right, so that's a, a little bit generic. Let's bring in something else like the Ash Roth base. And this one has a, 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 light, a, a nice sort of, no, no, not that one, sorry. Uh, I think it's the, Hickory white. 
yeah, hickory white. So this one adds a nice sort of like layering effect to break things up a, a bit more. So I'm just going to make it very, very rough um, based on the cassowary, but the cassowary one is pretty flat. This one is going to be a bit more damage, I would say. I'll probably do this a little bit more thoroughly than this, but just want to show you how easy, once you're happy with the base, once you're happy with the manual placement of the details, this thing is really easy. It's not, you know, that's why I have those brushes and that's why I have custom brushes because it makes it really easy. But the, the key thing, the key element of this whole process is to have a solid design and a solid silhouette, a solid uh, primary and secondary details because the details, if you have something that doesn't work um, without details, the details are not going to do anything for it. This is going to make it even worse and noisier. Okay, so here is the, the second part of this trick. So I just added those you know, rough details in here. I'm going to use the Smooth um, Picks. So this is a smooth brush that comes with ZBrush. Uh, so it's called the Smooth Picks. So if I press Shift now, this is my selected brush. I want to right-click holding that brush, and I'm going to reduce the intensity quite a bit uh, to 25. And... The idea with this smooth brush is that it's going to respect the crevices and it's going to only smooth out the top areas. So that way I can sort of take something that was intended to be more like um, a brush for bark and making it softer so that it feels more like a bone type of thing. So I'm just using that smooth picks and I think that is pretty cool. Now we can also take it a, a step further um, and let's use something like the trim dynamic, for example, and we can flatten some of these things back. Uh, just looking at the reference, so, you know, like the front is, is pretty, pretty flat. And so I get rougher and rougher here towards the back, so I'm not going to flatten that, that bit. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So that is one set of details. Um, and obviously this is something that I would do at the same sort of Pay, uh, the same sort of time that I do the whole um, creature. I'm just trying to isolate certain portions with different types of details so that you have ideas of how to tackle different things.